Today, Darius, I'll show you. I, I started with this storyboard, you know, because we have so much footage that I felt like I had to figure out, a, you know, I had to have a way to start putting things together. So now that I can share with you, you'll see. Oh, uh, you're muted. I am? Oh, okay, never mind. Okay. It just cut out for a second. All right. So I'm, I'm going to go to the widescreen so you can see the whole thing. And I haven't done a whole bunch of editing. Um, Wait, okay. stop. I tried moving stuff around so it makes sense, but here we go. The film is about protecting our human rights as people. A violation that I'm unwilling to tolerate. Bullying is one. If I see anybody picking on somebody, it's uncalled for probably. It's just not right. When people yell at me, the judging opinion. One is putting your finger in that. That's the one. Like, judging someone's opinion or my opinion. I really, I cannot. I hate it. I'll be shocked. However, once I'm no longer shocked and I'm processing what's happening to me, I am going to definitely file a complaint, a formal complaint um, against that person or that party. Um, and they're probably dealing with something in their life, so they take it on other people. I have a question for you. How do you respond when someone violates your rights, your human rights, with either their words or their actions? So when people are just saying words, that's easy for me to kind of let that roll off my back. That I can just go outside and play without thinking that I'm not going to come back one day. I have a question. Okay. How do you respond when someone or a stranger or someone you know violates your human rights with either their words or their actions? I'll be actually, I'll be in shock. I'm saying, please don't touch my hair because I don't like it when you touch my hair. Okay. So you give them feet, you know. Um, I'm a little bit of a political activist. I participated in a bunch of the recent protests for the Black Lives Matter movement, for Breonna Taylor, for George Floyd, for Ahmaud Arbery. And um, when somebody takes action against your rights and against you know, your beliefs, that's when you really have to step up and say, what am I going to do about it? The action that caused me to go and protest and become a, a leader of my generation was the killings, which is an action. The killings of Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Aubrey, George Floyd, and countless others, Philando Castile, Trayvon Martin. It's, it's been going on for a really long time. And that action breeds other action. Um, their actions bred my action to go and speak out and speak up for the people who aren't speaking for themselves, speak up for people like me who have brown skin, who have all different types of skin, you know, those who are the downtrodden, you know, that's, that's who I'm speaking for. And when people violate my rights with their actions and words, it's up to you to choose how you want to react. Uh, there's no need for you to be racist. There's, there's just, oh. not, I don't see a point in being racist, calling other people like racist slurs and stuff. Touch my hair. Touch my hair. Okay. okay. First choice, he could duck his head on and pretend he didn't see anything. Second choice, he could call the police. Third choice, he could try to intervene, try to solve the problem. Because they may not know what I um, think would be disrespectful of me, what he means. So I definitely am okay with correcting someone's behavior. With the bullying one, I'll probably confront them. First, uh, if I see it happening, I'll confront them and say, uh, why are you doing this? Why is it to this person? Do you want to talk about it or something? No, you know, you know how like, some people sometimes are crazy, so they have a, so they have a gun with, the, with them, and they're like, I need help. And then they, and then the person refuses to bring out the gun. And they're like, what about now? I wait till I calm down and say, you don't yell at me. I don't like when people, and tell them I don't like when you yell at me. My response is usually um, a little bit of shock, just because um, the gall of someone to treat somebody unfairly or inhumanely. Um, I definitely learned in my 40 some years how to defend myself, uh, but in a way in which it does not uh, bring myself or my daughter any 
shame. Um, so I am definitely respectfully vocal um, when it comes to someone showing us respect. I believe that we have to teach people how to respect us and also teach them how to be treated um, because what we allow, we encourage. And so I definitely live by that strongly. You know, kind of take their hate and use that as positive energy for me to propel my hunger, my fight for my rights. I'm going to tell my mom or my teacher. Yeah, abuse your, abuse your freedom of speech right. Um, and so when I feel that there has been um, an intentional um, uh, set against me or my daughter, um, I am not hey, Chris. Um, hey, dear. slow to respond. Uh, in a way to correct so we were just language. looking back at the footage. Uh, that is up to you. Do you get the video I sent you yesterday? No, I haven't looked at it yet, but I think so. Thank you. So this is pretty much the end. And then I, you know, have the images and the names. Um so I didn't have his name there correctly and still need to it's got tons more editing that needs to happen. But I felt like it needed to, I needed to start putting things in order so that we could talk about it. So I'm going to close that down and I'm going to stop sharing my screen. So tell me, what's your reaction so far? You saw from beginning to end, uh, uh, Darius, can you talk a little bit about, I know it's all chopped up right now. We need a lot of smooth edges. But talk about what you saw and what you think needs to happen next. Um, I liked how it looked like a collage of uh, all of our different ideas and all of our different opinions. And uh, I don't know. That's good. I like the word, the, the use of the word collage. I think that's a, a really good, a good descriptor. And we might want to hold on to that for, um, you know, as part of our introduction to it. Uh, for what you saw at the very end, Chris, what comes up to you? What positive and negative? Uh, well, I kind of just saw the names of the people and stuff, but um, I think it was, I think it was very good. I, th I think um, it came together well. Well, I also saw the clip, like a little clip at the end with uh, Solomon. Uh, I think I think the um, videos and the names is a really good touch. I'm going to go back to the very beginning because I want you to see the first one minute, okay? Can we do that? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the very first one minute. And in the very first one minute. The film is about it, protecting our human rights as people. Uh -huh. So the, the objective at the very beginning, I, I, I have uh, this book here. I write down all the things that we said. So we said that we were gonna start with uh, introducing what the film is about, then we go to to some of the recorded interviews. So we have it in a collage fashion. And then some of the specific responses. I want to tell you what we've already covered. We started out by talking about and agreeing to do the interviews. So now we have, we probably have a good eight to 10 voices on here. Next, uh, we have them responding to two different questions. One is the question of violation. And Chris, you started that. The yeah. violation that I'm unwilling to tolerate. Bullying is one. If I see anybody picking on somebody, it's uncalled for probably. It's just not right. When people yell at me, they're judging the opinion. One is putting your finger in my face. That's the one. Like, judging someone's opinion or my opinion. I really, I cannot. I hate it. I'll be shocked. However, once I'm no longer shocked and I'm processing what's happening to me, I am going to definitely file a complaint. Okay, so you can see that the violation was the next piece after defining what the film was about. Uh, what are the types of violations? 
uh, that folks are talking about or concerned about. I think that, that there was one piece there where you all talked, where Chris, you introduced the idea that someone might have a gun and they start to act crazy. I think that's all the way at the very end. I think that that needs to go up towards the front as part of violations, as we're laying out the violations from words to actual violence before we get to uh, how we feel. What's your response to those first two pieces? One, the definition of what the film is about, and two, uh, the definition of violations. What do we need to add there? Do we need, Chris, um, do we need you to go in and, and explain what a violation is before talking about examples of violations? What do you all uh, I could if you want. Okay. So why don't we record that right now? Okay. Okay. So I'm going to take off the screen share, and then I want you to record what what do we mean by a violation, okay? Okay. How do I record? You just start speaking. It's automatically recording it. Oh, uh, okay. Um, the definition of a violation is you uh, outstepping your boundaries to somebody else or get, getting in somebody else's personal space kind of and uh, like whatever does make them feel safe uh, they could say you're violating them if they're not feeling safe around you or if you're harassing them okay that's fine stop now you've had a chance to to say it out loud one time now comes the opportunity to put it together in a more succinct way Okay, go ahead, do it again. Someone violating you is someone harassing you, getting in your personal space. Ah, I forgot. Ah. Okay, stop. Ah, Just know that you'll come back to that, okay? Yeah. You, don't have to, you don't have to be on the spot. Okay, so now we know that Chris is going to state what the violation, what the definition of a violation is. I'm gonna go back to the screen share. After we, after we had the definition of the violation, and Chris, you're going to add that to it, um, yeah. we had the feelings. So your, your aunt talks about her feelings, and she also talks about her actions. If yeah. we move up a little bit. I'll ask if she got it. You asked me if I got the drawing? Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you want me to go back and pull all of those, those two things up so that we can look at those while Chris is just kind of jotting down his statement about what a violation is? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm always asking you to make decisions. Um, while, you're, while I'm pulling that up, Chris, you're working on what a violation is. Yeah. And Darius, I want you to think about um, just... Um, how we can start to pull together the ending in a tighter way. We have a beginning with the definitions, the examples. What do we need to be thinking about that will tie it all together at the end? And while you two are doing that, I'm gonna go back and um, I'm gonna go back to my uh, email and look for uh, the things that you all sent to me, okay? Okay, because I think I sent you a video of my brother doing the interview. Okay, let's do that. Oh, wow. I see that nice picture of you there, Chris. I mean, uh, Darius. Okay. Uh, did you send it to me in your name, Darius? Uh, yeah. You sent it today? Yeah. At 12. So you're working on that definition, Chris? Yeah, okay. I'm thinking about some. Hey, Darius, I think that perhaps uh, one of the things that you could be thinking about as a statement is uh, something like uh, in this particular, in this um, collage of interviews, who who is it that we are engaging with? 
so that we can record that at the very beginning because you say what it's about, but I also think that people need to know who is speaking. So if we could add those two things. Speaking now. I don't have all the names of everybody. Uh, I need to go back and wait. So you want me to say all the all, everyone's names and everything? No, I just wanted you to make some sort of general statement about the the population that we're interviewing. We are interviewing uh, young people and okay. and, and their re relatives or something to that effect. Okay. Uh, you mean 12 o'clock last night or 12 o'clock today? It's 12 o'clock today. Okay. Or around 12, yeah. I see Chris. Can you see my video of my brother? Yeah, I got it. Let me, uh, let me go back to you so you can see it. Um, I'm going to share that screen. And then while I'm sharing that, I'm going to be looking on my phone for what Darius sent me. You see it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm going to play it. Hello, my name is Jerron Hickman. And the question is, how do you respond when someone's words or actions violate your rights as a human being? For me personally, my first instinct would be to try to educate the other person and make sure the other party understands my point of view and understand right from wrong. If that doesn't work, I would have to follow up with filing a police report, filing a complaint, to try and de-escalate the situation and make sure this individual doesn't just understand my point of view, but understands the law as well. And also that person receives consequences because sometimes people can only receive help or only change their ways through the consequences and not just through educating them through my lens and perspective. Thank you. And that's all. Very nice. Okay. So what, did it, what do you think, Chris? It was good. It took a couple of tries, but it came out well. Okay. <laughs> All right. Tell me, what was the challenge? Uh, I think he did it well. He he just like he tested his audio like the first couple of times he played around with it, and then he then I told him I could record it for him, but then he said he doesn't want my Android quality, so <laughs> then he just recorded it himself on his phone, and then I think it came out pretty well at the end. I mean, I was on the side. And I and I like wrote the question down for him on a paper so he could reference it while he's talking. But yeah. So I love it that he restated the question. And so one of the things that I like to do when you have an individual being interviewed, and as uh, Darius titled it, a collage of voices, is that this is 46 minutes long. So one of the things that I would probably uh, want us to do with this is to break it down into three 15 minutes, uh, 15 second segments. So his voice is repeated three different times. One time where he's stating the question, one time where he talks about how he feels, and another time he talks about his actions. And then as those are chopped up, to uh, insert them in the various places in the film where they fit so that we see him more than once and we have that movement throughout the film because people tend to uh, stop listening after about 15 seconds if they're seeing the same face. But when another face, face pops up, I think that they stick with it. What is your thinking about those, uh, those ideas? I think it's pretty smart. I thought we'd break it up. Okay, so you, you tell me, I'm gonna go back and uh, I'm going first I'm gonna download it, I'm gonna save it. And then I'm going to, um, I'm gonna drop it in. I'm gonna call it Chris's brother, right? Yeah. What's his name? Jerron. Spell his name. J-A-R-O-N. What's his last name? Uh, Hickman. Okay, so now I'm gonna save that, and then I'm gonna. Oh, the operation could not be completed. Probably because my files have started to be saved. Let's see if I can just save it. Okay, cancel. Okay, let's just replace it. 
Okay. okay. All right, so now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna drop it in. And when I drop it in, I'm gonna ask you to tell me where to make the cuts, okay? Okay. So I'm gonna go back to our film. Did you cut the screen sharing has stopped as the shared window, okay. And I don't have enough space on the disc to do that right now. I can't do that right now. I still have to uh, finish. Uh, removing some things. Did you come up with a statement that you want to make for the beginning of the film? Uh, I'm not sure if it's done, but I said a violation is when someone is harassing you or putting their hands on you. I was going to say, um, uh, I was going to say some after harassing, but I kind of forgot it. Uh, okay. I'll like wait. someone, if somebody's violating you, it is, I didn't put what I said. Okay. Okay, that's a good statement. Uh, Darius, did you come up with a statement to, for us to start with uh, from the beginning? I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you what we already have. Uh, yeah, uh, I said the youth, or we are the youth speaking on how, or on how to respond to people violating our human rights along with our family and friends or something like that. Okay, know. so let me just play with you what you already have said, okay? Uh -huh. I'm gonna play that right now. The film is about protecting our human rights as people. So, so there, that, that part, you said that what the film is and again, When people oh, that's, that, that's examples of violations, and that's where we're going to put Daria, I mean, Chris response in. Um, but I wanted you to see the question that you posed. Okay, so this was your last question, uh, Darius. I have a question. Okay. How do you respond when someone or a stranger or someone you know violates your human rights with either their word or their actions. Okay, so that was about the response. How do you respond? And so now we're going to record who is responding, and that's going to go at this beginning part, um, Darius. And then uh, after that, Chris, I want you to give that definition because after the definition of the violation, you will go right into giving an example, your first example. Okay. Okay, so I'll play that for you. So you'll see where that's A right. violation that I'm unwilling to tolerate. Bullying is one. If I see anybody picking on somebody, it's uncalled for probably it's just not right when people yell at me the judging opinion what okay because i was trying to get those other voices in so i'll probably start with your question and then have them give their examples and then move your bullying until after uh Tanaya has spoken okay all uh, right it looked pretty then, good okay great so now we're ready to record that Chris, we're going to go, I mean, uh, Darius, we're going to go with your recording first. Okay. Um, can, can you look at the camera? Are you ready to look yeah. at the camera? You I'm just trying to think of what I should say. You need uh, time? Okay, that's fine. You think about it, we'll go to Chris. Because it doesn't matter what order we do it in. Uh -huh. I'm going to just download it anyway. Go ahead, Chris. You already uh, have a question written out? You ready yeah. to speak? Um, Look at the camera. A violation is when someone is harassing you or putting their hands on you. Okay. Do it one more time. 
A violation is when someone is harassing you or putting your, their hands on you. Right. Okay, so that's fine. Now we have that. Uh, ready? Are you ready now? Uh, yeah. Okay, go. Okay. The people we are interviewing are the youth and the youth's family and friends. Right. Now we have that. Uh, so now we know who we are. We we know uh, who's. We know the reason that we're doing it. We know who is participating, and we have uh, the. We've already defined what a violation is. Then we give the examples of the violation. Next is how do we feel? So um, I'm going to have to go back and chop that up a little bit more. Um, Darius, I didn't get the, the drawings from you. Really? I'll try sending them again. Okay, great. Chris, help me out. Tell me what we need to do now. Okay. Um, on into the world. Um, okay, so we got to okay, I'll show you all the headings. Yeah. Responding to words. Feeling safe outside. This is Wait. Darius asking that question again. So I'm gonna show you what I have you have you done this uh I movie before? No. Um, I've done something in it, but I'm not sure what or I, I don't know when. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what I do is I go back and I use this uh it says titles here and I double click on the title and because she is talking about violations you see where that that comes up i'm just going to put violations and i add those titles because it helps me to remember what it's about um and i don't feel so lost like i'm all over the place when i'm doing the editing and then i take it and i stretch it all the way across where she's speaking so that i won't forget that that's her whole speech on violations this right here is your aunt's speech on responding and here, let's see what you're talking about. Um, and they're probably dealing with something in their life, so they take it on other people. Okay, so this is the why. Why people behave the way they do. Yeah. So I'm going to put uh, that title in. Why uh, uh, the, mis uh, the, uh, the violation. And then I click back on it so that I can make sure that it comes up in that uh, purple space. So that's, uh, and the questions, how do you respond? That's a long piece by, and I look at the timing on it. Um, that if you look up here in this little at the purple box, it says it's three uh, minutes, seven seconds. I, when I'm making a film, I typically try to keep other, everyone's response around two minutes. Because my experience is, actually, I don't even know if it's two minutes, it may be uh, uh, three seconds. Because, no, it's nine, uh, where am I? Nine seconds. You see right here in the corner, it tells us how many seconds. Most people can't take more than, uh, than that. That's a, a long amount. Responding to words, Feeling safe outside, you talked about that. Yeah. And this right here, I believe, is the question that Darius asked. And the question at this point is? I have a question. Okay. Oh, that's Darius saying the question. I have a question. Okay. How do you respond when someone or a stranger or someone you know violates your human rights with either their words or their actions? The actual and the reason I put all of the, those faces there, uh, Darius, is so that people would see who you were actually talking to. Oh. Who is it that, that's answering the, that question? Um, so like I said, uh, there's a lot of stuff that is mixed up. But one of the things I wanted to ask you guys about, 
is Solomon here talks about, um, he talks about protest and, and his, the reasons that he protests and taking a stand. And so today is the funeral of John Lewis. And John Lewis talked about um, good trouble. That was his statement. He said that when he was growing up, his mother and father used to tell him, don't go out and get in trouble. He said, but in marching with Dr. King, he was 23 years old, and he felt like he was getting in good trouble. And I thought, wow, that's kind of interesting. How, how can we use that? Should we use that? Should we talk about the current protest? Talk to me a little bit about how you all think we should, if and whether or not that should be a part of what, we, what we're talking about, and um, if we should also include and how we should include the current protest. Give me some feedback about that. Um. So I, let me restate my question. John Lewis, the good trouble, talking about good trouble. Should his voice be included in that idea as a historical point of reference? And Solomon's talk about the current protests and why. How should, how should and if we should include those two pieces in what we're working on? Uh. Um, I guess we could because, um, I guess it'll make an impact because of his passing today or his funeral today. I guess it'll make kind of make a Im bigger impact, maybe. Does it add anything? I think it does. What do you think, um, Darius? Does it add anything? Uh, well, the current protests are dealing with how people are, like, how their human rights are being violated. So I think that is kind of relevant. So John Lewis is relevant because it adds to the conversation about violation of human rights. Yeah. yeah. So who's going to introduce that? Who, who's going to make that introduction? Because that might be one way that we can either start or end by saying this is in honor of the work that John Lewis did and his idea of you know, responding to violations, or we could do it at the very end. What do you think? Um, I'm not sure. Okay. Well, why don't we think about that? And perhaps I'll pull up some uh, a quick a, a quick piece with his voice in it, and and have it for you when we see each other next week. Okay. Okay. Uh. There's a lot, of, a lot more editing left here to do. I will work on this over the next couple of days. Chris, I will take the video uh, interview that you did and insert it and okay. see if, it, it, if I can make it flow and clean up some of those chopped up edges. I'll, in, I'll include the two pieces that you both spoke today Darius, are you going to send me that drawing again? Yeah, I just did. Okay. It's both like through, but I don't know. Okay. I'll look for it. Okay. And I'll send you an email if I don't receive it. Okay. Um, next week is our last week. And on Tuesday, I'd like to have this ready to present to you all for approval and for changes and that we would do our final changes on Tuesday. And then on Thursday, we'll do a reflective conversation about this whole experience. And hopefully we'll have more participants such as the folks from the Children of Mine. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they'll be with us um, next week just for the, if nothing else, for the viewing of it and for their reflection on the experience or the process. 
How does that feel? Good. It's okay? Yeah. I, I think that's just about it for today. I think that I need to do my work now of kind of cleaning this up and moving stuff around. You can see what I've worked on in the last few hours. It took me, with all of the footage that we had, we had over 45 minutes from last week of footage and I chopped it all down and just kind of cut and cut and cut and now it's at five minutes. So with the footage that you've just sent, the footage that we did today, I still have to uh, cut a whole lot of stuff so we get everything down to a five minute film. And I love the word a collage. So we might want to use that in the definition or the or in the title, okay? So let's be thinking about what is going to be the title next week. Let's come up with a title for the film. Okay? Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you for your time today. Of course. I appreciate you. See you next week, 1.30 on Tuesday. All right. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye. Hey, Chris, you trying to play Brawl? <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure, I'll call you. Okay.